Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Sikon and I'm an emergency physician at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. In this video, we're going to teach methods of ocular irrigation following a chemical exposure. In the setting of chemical exposure, time is cornea, and the prompt initiation of ocular irrigation can be vision saving. This procedure must be initiated prior to the arrival of the ophthalmology consultant. Patients can suffer chemical exposure in the eyes in multiple ways. Among these are household cleaning products, laboratory experiments, and even pepper spray as a part of law enforcement training. Symptomatic patients require immediate irrigation regardless of the exposure. Do not delay irrigation for any part of the ophthalmological examination. Once the patient's pain is controlled and their ocular pH is normal, proceed with your ophthalmological exam. Whether that be manual irrigation with a saline bottle, an eye wash station, or a sink, you must use the most rapid method available to begin the irrigation of the eye immediately. Installation of Reparacane into the patient's eye will help control pain during irrigation. While the patient undergoes the initial rapid irrigation, go ahead and gather the equipment for a continual irrigation system. Equipment usually includes a Morgan lens, tubing, preparacane, irrigation fluid, and some sort of irrigation runoff collection system. We'll discuss those in a little bit more detail later on. Additionally, you should obtain pH test scripts, or if they are unavailable, you can utilize the pH portion of a urine dipstick. After at least 20 minutes of ocular irrigation, which is roughly one liter of fluid, you can obtain an ocular pH. To check an ocular pH, gently retract the lower eyelid and touch a small portion of pH paper to the conjunctival fornix. The color metric result will result immediately. Compare the color of the pH paper to the reference color guide. It's usually located in the paper's box or in an insert. If the patient has a normal pH after initial irrigation but is still symptomatic, continue irrigation. That is essential. Normal ocular pH is anywhere from 7.0 to 7.3. If the patient is symptomatic or the pH is abnormal, proceed with continuous irrigation and insert a Morgan lens. Prior to inserting a Morgan lens, place the patient in a comfortable position, preferentially with them lying on their back on a stretcher. Instill proparacane into the eye by gently retracting the lower eyelid and placing a drop into the conjunctival sac. Following this, Go ahead and hang a spiked bag of IV fluid on an IV pole above the patient. Leave the IV fluid flow off initially. Connect the tubing of the Morgan lens to the IV tubing. Begin a slow rate of IV fluid flow so that during placement of the lens, it can safely float on top of the cornea and not cause additional injury. To place the Morgan lens, first retract the patient's upper eyelid and instruct them to look downwards. Then gently insert the Morgan lens under the upper eyelid. Next, have the patient look up. Retract the lower eyelid and drop the lens into place. Tell the patient that they can let their eyes close and please tell them to keep it closed. Adjust the IV tubing to the desired flow rate. For continuous emergency irrigation, wide open is often the desired rate. Consider taping the Morgan lens tubing to the patient's temple or forehead to ensure it is not accidentally dislodged. And ocular irrigation should continue until the patient's pH normalizes and their pain resolves. Fortunately, the Morgan lens doesn't need to be removed to recheck the patient's pH. To check the patient's pH during irrigation, first stop the IV flow to the Morgan lens for one minute. Then, occlude additional flow by pinching the distal tubing of the Morgan lens. Retract the lower eyelid and gently touch the pH paper to the conjunctival fornix. When you're ready to remove the Morgan lens, ensure that the lens still has IV fluid flow to cushion the cornea. Next, have the patient look down, retract their lower eyelid, and finally, slide the Morgan lens gently down and out. Terminate the flow to the Morgan lens. If a Morgan lens is unavailable, you can accomplish the same task with a simple nasal cannula. Just connect the nasal cannula to IV tubing, place the cannula over the patient's nasal bridge, 
and with one prong aimed towards each medial, medial canthus, adjust the desired flow rate, and this will irrigate the patient's eyes. It's important, however, to make sure that you instruct the patient to keep their eyes open so that the irrigation actually goes into their eyes and to make any necessary adjustments to the connection, i.e. adding tape between the IV tubing and the nasal cannula tubing so that there isn't any leakage of fluid. So there are several methods to collect the irrigation runoff and keep patients dry during this procedure. A simple method consists of placing multiple absorbent pads, such as Chuck's pads, beneath your patient during the procedure. Alternatively, you can place a plastic protective gown or surgical gown around a patient's neck, facing backwards, drape the tail of the gown into a waste bin located on the ground behind the patient's head. As irrigation runs off, it'll run down the gown and into the waste bin. Also, you can utilize the bedpan method. During initial positioning, have them lie with their head in the clean bedpan. Place a suction catheter into the pan. You can tape it in place so it stays there and set it to continuous suction. As irrigation runs off, it will collect in the pan and be drained by the suction tubing. Alternatively, a wash basin can be utilized for this method. Overall, immediate ocular irrigation is a vision-saving procedure. It must be performed correctly and immediately so it is important that you familiarize yourself with the setup beforehand. Knowing the tricks for Morgan lens placement and irrigation collection are essential for patient compliance and comfort. I hope this video has been helpful. For more resources and instructional videos, please visit VanderbiltEM.com.